The AAM-36 Scimitar is a long-range, active, radar-guided missile optimized for engagements beyond visual range. Capable of sustained low hypersonic flight, the Scimitar is ideal for attacking all aircraft from over the horizon, but remains exceptional at general air-to-air -air engagement at ranges beyond 20 kilometers. The key to using the Scimitar effectively is to allow its lower thrust, longer burning rocket motor extra time to accelerate to its maximum attack speed. The Scimitar simply isn't capable of close range engagement and becomes increasingly less effective below 20 km engagements. It is ineffective below 10 km. This is because the Scimitar's control surfaces and targeting systems require extreme speed to work and only achieve their best effect when operating at the missile's maximum velocity of Mach 4. Like all radar-based missiles, the Scimitar tracks a radar cross-section and looks for changes in that signature's relative speed with each radar pulse. The greater the difference, the more accurate its tracking becomes. With near hypersonic engagements, the Scimitar offers minimal warning to its targets, often less than 10 seconds between detection and impact. Few aircraft are able to assume an effective notching position to evade its approach in that time, and fewer still can maintain it long enough to break the lock. With a 45 kilogram TNT equivalent yield, the Scimitar is capable of destroying any aircraft with a direct hit, though larger vessels like the Tarantula can occasionally survive a single strike due to system redundancies. Most impact events against large aircraft will inflict critical damage, making it a reliable first strike weapon where detection and tracking are available over the horizon. With a 20-second acceleration phase and 60 seconds of total burn time, the Scimitar is able to sustain acceleration for a powered approach to distant targets, making evasive maneuvers by a hostile less effective, though not impossible. Counteracting the Scimitar is more about anticipation and prevention than interception or jamming. Fast-moving, surprise, or first-strike attacks using stealth or coordination can get inside the Scimitar's practical minimum range. Likewise, low flight with terrain occlusion or preemptive notching positions, if a launch is suspected, will also make effective use of the Scimitar more difficult for a hostile aircraft. Interceptor missiles can shoot the Scimitar down if fired into its line of flight, but no available missiles can catch the Scimitar at its maximum speed from behind. Optimal use of the Scimitar is best done using data link from a low and slow flying aircraft on the edge of an engagement. Allow for 20 seconds of acceleration when selecting targets. 20 kilometers range is a good minimum though it can hit targets much farther away. Fly low and assume a preemptive notching position relative to the engagement while selecting targets. Use data link to identify ideal targets flying directly towards or away from your current position. Turn in to attack, pop up, and fire before returning to a low and slow perpendicular course. Extreme range means the Scimitar excels at destroying supply, transport, AWACS, and gunships that like to loiter on the edge of battles or deep behind enemy lines. Often, the Scimitar can fly through or over hostile positions to reach these targets, though this does increase the risk of an opportunistic intercept. Since the Scimitar's engine burns constantly, it remains vulnerable to thermal guidance systems fired into its approach. Low-flying aircraft over the ocean can still be effectively attacked by the Scimitar due to its high-speed approach, so long as they aren't in or near a notching position with radar jamming support.
best attack is from sufficient altitude to overfly any terrain. So pick your targets, then turn, pop up, and fire before diving back down to repeat this process. These maneuvers make it difficult for hostiles using the scimitar or similar missile system to launch a counterattack at extreme range. Also note that hostile radar and data link systems will often see the scimitar long before a warning can be provided to target aircraft. It's good practice to warn the whole team if a scimitar is sighted on the map and to assume a defensive position as soon as it's determined to be approaching, whether or not you receive a warning. Pilots with electronic jamming pods should prioritize these targets, when possible, since they often reach deep behind front lines to engage targets of opportunity, like supply aircraft and AWACS. Hostile craft seen launching these weapons should also be prioritized for direct or indirect attack when possible. Radar jamming from an electronic warfare system can disrupt the radar targeting of hostile aircraft and prevent the scimitar from working correctly when launched. If a hostile aircraft is believed to be acting in this role, lock it with a jamming pod and annoy it into submission. Suppress any missiles that it tries to launch with the same tactics. That's all I have for today. If you made it this far, you probably liked the video. Be sure to show it with a click in the right place, and I'll catch you all later.